If you're here because you or a loved one has recently experienced a pregnancy loss, I am so sorry. I understand your pain. I'm Katie Lee Hornberger. I'm a certified genetic counselor, and I work in the space of fertility and reproductive medicine. And today, we're talking about chemical pregnancies. You'll often hear the term biochemical pregnancy and chemical pregnancy used interchangeably, and they both describe a very early pregnancy loss within the first five weeks or so of pregnancy. A chemical pregnancy loss occurs when an individual gets a positive pregnancy test. This could either be an at-home or drugstore urine test, or a test that's done at a doctor's office using a blood draw. And then later on, they get a negative pregnancy test or the value of that quantitative test starts dipping down and they get their period back. Usually this happens within a matter of days or a week or so. The reason providers call this type of pregnancy loss a chemical loss or a biochemical pregnancy is because there is chemical evidence. There is that HCG evidence that an embryo was starting to grow and was implanting causing the HCG levels to be detectable. But there was not yet clinical evidence. There were no ultrasound findings that suggest or show a gestational sac or a pregnancy because it was too early to be able to see anything on ultrasound yet. The pregnancy was still way too small. In a typical pregnancy, the levels of HCG rise very rapidly in those early, early days of pregnancy. With the most sensitive quantitative tests at a doctor's office, like using a blood sample, Usually, HCG can be detected as early as eight or nine days after conception. Take a look at this table right here that shows how HCG should increase in a typical developing singleton pregnancy. And compare it to this table. This is a table showing my serial HCGs done at my doctor's office in one of my chemical pregnancies. As you can see, in a typical pregnancy that's developing normally, you should see a rapid increase in the HCGs doubling within a matter of days where in my chemical pregnancy loss, my HCG is slowly declined, which suggested that I was having a chemical pregnancy. Now you can also detect chemical pregnancies with at-home pregnancy tests. If you're testing with drugstore or urine pregnancy tests, not the digital type, but the type that used two lines, you can pick up chemical pregnancies. Take a look at this progression of pregnancy tests. So in a typical pregnancy, if you test day after day, which I've done it, I don't recommend it, it might drive you crazy, but if you do test day after day, you would expect to see in a normally developing pregnancy that that test line, the second line, is going to darken as the amount of HCG continues to increase. But in a chemical pregnancy, if you're taking serial pregnancy tests at home, the line will actually start to lighten and become lighter and lighter until the line is no longer apparent because the HCG levels are decreasing. Now that you know how a chemical pregnancy can be detected, you might be wondering how are chemical pregnancies different from other types of first trimester miscarriages? Now for people who have later first trimester miscarriages, miscarriages that occur at seven, eight, nine weeks, typically there's some sort of clinical evidence or ultrasound evidence of the pregnancy forming. With these later miscarriages, you can typically see a gestational sac or the little embryo or the fetus forming on ultrasound. But with chemical pregnancies, the pregnancy loss occurs so early on that you can't yet visualize anything on ultrasound. So there's not ultrasound evidence, but rather there's this chemical evidence, these positive HCG tests that suggest that there was a very early loss just after implantation occurred. Now, most of the time, chemical pregnancies resolve on their own without any treatment, but it is really important to let your OBGYN know or your primary care provider know if you think you're experiencing a pregnancy loss so that they can determine based on your history, whether you need any follow-up testing or whether they might wanna see you in the office. It is really common and totally human to blame yourself. This might not be the case for you, but if it is, just know it's, it's really common and totally human to try and find an explanation or sometimes even blame ourselves when we have early pregnancy losses. But the truth of the matter is, these things are just not in our control. Unfortunately, chemical pregnancies are incredibly common thought that maybe somewhere between 15 to 25 percent of all pregnancies result in chemical losses. So these early losses, they are just so common and there is really nothing that you can do to prevent them from happening. Additionally, even though early losses are super common, they can be equally devastating and frustrating for a lot of people who experience them. I know for me, it was incredibly disappointing to have the hope of a positive pregnancy test and just days later start getting lighter lines or if I was testing at the doctor's office to find out that my numbers weren't increasing as they should and that they started to decrease. So if you're feeling devastated, know that it's a normal feeling for a lot of people who've gone through a chemical loss. If you're struggling, I really encourage you to reach out to your provider, whether that's an OBGYN or a midwife or a primary care doctor to let them know you're having a hard time. A therapist, if you see one, maybe find one if you aren't connected with one. 
or friends and family. Because these types of losses are so, so common, it's really possible and very likely that some of your family members or friends have gone through these early losses and maybe haven't shared them. If you'd like to watch other videos on chemical pregnancies and on miscarriages, check out the link in my description. And next week, I'll be posting a video on identifying whether you've had a chemical pregnancy. If this type of content is useful for you, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. And if you've got questions or other topics you'd like me to cover, please write them down below. Thanks for watching. Take care.